Here are my top 11 necromancy tips you possibly didn't know to help you in your journey to become the best necromancer you can be. A lot of the conjurers cost adrenaline to use and to command, but not if you don't have a target. Before heading into any boss fight or encounter, you can conjure your skeleton, ghost, and zombie, and then command both the skeleton and the ghost completely for free. This is gonna offer you a huge damage boost at the start of any fight. Instead of running around the ritual circle repairing your glyphs and candles one at a time, you can click repair on the center to instantly fix the whole thing up. A fast way to get to the City of Um ritual site without the teleport is to teleport to War's Retreat, exit to Draenor, and then click on the portal. Because necromancy is a new skill, most XP buffs and boosts like lamps, stars, and sacrifice scrimshaws do not work, but Torstal Incense and the Inspire All Relics will both give you plus 2% experience each for a total boost of 4%. This is a really good adrenaline bar for AFK training necromancy. At Abyssal Savages or Ravenous Schools, this can net you close to 1 million XP per hour, completely AFK. If you don't have the Zut Cape, replace Death Skulls with the Zombie and you'll be good to go. Speaking of AFKing, if you're trying to AFK train and you're getting absolutely blasted, try adding the Ghost Spirit to the end of your Revo bar. It will help a ton with sustaining your HP as he heals you for a percentage of the damage he deals. The best time to start working towards 4,500 souls for the tier 5 skill tree is at level 60, when you unlock the tier 2 ritual site. But to maximize your output, you'll want to use Multiply 2 Glyphs, and those require level 66. Using a Necromancy Potion or Overload will allow you to create the Glyphs without being level 66, so you can power through those souls. This also works at level 90 at the tier 3 ritual site, where you can boost to level 103 for Multiply 3 and get a whopping 240 souls per communion. If you're having trouble seeing the tiny sparkle on a glyph or candle after clicking on the Shambling Horror, you can activate the Dusk Skybox and then go to Advanced, click Load Settings and change all the values to zero and then save them. For some people, it's a little easier to see. In addition, if you click on the Horror and then the glyph, you can quickly click on both a second time to get two XP drops. This takes a ton of practice because it has to be insanely fast. If you're having trouble with the ambassador kill you need to upgrade the power gear to tier 90, you can duo or trio him. And if that's also too tall of an order, you can duo with someone who has a death touch dart. As long as you tag the boss before they dart it, you'll get the upgrade piece. There are a bunch of necromancy customization settings in skills and experience necromancy in your settings tab. This includes things like removing confirmation messages during rituals and getting rid of that obnoxious highlight effect. If you're lucky enough to have the tier 95 Omni Guard, you can put your old Death Guard in an Essence of Finality to continue to be able to use the extremely powerful special attack. But wait, instead of putting your tier 90 Death Guard into the amulet, you can make or buy a tier 71, as it's much cheaper and it has the same special attack. Once it's in the amulet, the damage will be exactly the same. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome necromancy content. And if you have any videos that you want me to make about necromancy, leave them in the comments down below and I might just do that.